what a truly joyous occasion. And while we're here to honor Dr. Barry, certainly all of us want to express our thanks during a challenging time for the defense of this university as a preeminent research institution and for measuring our faculty with more than a calculator in dollars and cents to the leadership of Bill Powers. Thank you, President Powers. It has been my good fortune to know Margaret Berry. I counted them up, Margaret, for half of her lifetime. As students, my wife Libby and I enjoyed kitchen cacciatore at her West Austin home with her late father, a wonderful man whose compassionate nature is reflected in Margaret. Indeed, as I think about it, Margaret is what our parents wanted us to become, strong, steady, caring, and self-reliant. As a student during the 60s, I met Margaret at a time when this campus and this country was very unsettled. Indeed, at this very spot one night, at a great dinner held by Regent Frank Irwin next door, he referred to the student protesters outside as dirty nothings. And a few blocks from here pulled some out of the trees when the student, ex-student association was expanded. Margaret was part of the administration that Chairman Irwin micromanaged, sometimes to the great good of this university and sometimes to the not so good. But with Margaret's grace and professionalism, her amazing smile and her commitment to this university, she was able to maintain the confidence of all the administration, a sometimes troubled faculty and the many student protesters. As a graduate, I worked with her on a credit course called Problems in Higher Education. I think we still have some, Bill, for course material. <laughs> and in that course, we had a chance to visit with so many students about issues and concerns of this university. Through the years, as generations of her students uh, have been touched by Margaret, She's been there cheering me on personally, offering quiet advice to the youngest Texas state senator, listening, putting issues in context, and offering respectful reminders of how an issue might be viewed differently by reasonable persons of a different perspective. And she's done the same for generations of Longhorns. As you're well aware, today's honor is the product of a movement, of a groundswell, of so many of those who are gathered here, ably led by Rick Potter, with thousands of petitioners asking that this place be named for a woman who is not only one of Austin's most worthy citizens, but one of UT's greatest treasures, someone who has never forgotten that the eyes of Texas are upon her. Now we have this beautiful place to remind future generations of students why this is such a great university, and just how many ways each individual Longhorn can, in Margaret's words, do good things. Abraham Lincoln declared that in the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. Margaret's success isn't measured by her encyclopedic knowledge of these 40 acres, or by the number of insightful books that she has written, are the many campus innovations that she has personally been responsible in achieving, but most importantly, in the many lives, including mine, that she has touched. Icon is not a word that you use lightly, but that is really what Margaret Berry is for generations of Longhorns. Now, I know from experience that there aren't many things that Margaret will salute that don't have a little burn orange in them. <laughs> And in fact, I don't ever remember seeing her salute anything that was maroon and white. <laughs> but one notable exception is the red, white, and blue. And Margaret, I had this American flag flown over our nation's capital in Washington to honor you and this atrium ceremony, complete with certificate. We say, Margaret, we thank you, we love you for all that you represent. 